One, two, three. Hey there, welcome to my another installment of Abram tutorial series. In this video, we're about to cover how to properly organize your handlers and properly organize, properly register your handlers in, inside your Abram boat and how to duly utilize uh, Markdown inside your Abram library. So basically they provide you with the opportunity to use Markdown directly inside your Abram boat, just utilizing a couple of uh, built-in functions. So I guess this is going to be pretty simple. So let's get started and I'm going to create a new project folder. This is about uh, lesson two. So in this folder, I've already copied token API. Oh, no, I didn't copy it. I have to copy this token API and pass it here. And also I've created index.py. In this index.py, I'm going to work with our Agrum boat. So I've already activated the virtual environment. If you didn't do this, you have to activate your virtual environment. I guess you know how to do this because I've already uh, discussed about it in a previous lesson. So I don't think this is going to be difficult for you. Okay, let's open lesson two. I changed the directory to lesson two. And in this directory, I have index.py. Index.py is basically the entry point to our Agrum boat. This is the file that will that will launch our Agrum boat. And basically we have to do the same steps. We have to follow the same steps as in the previous video lessons. So in the previous episode, we just need to import from Agrum library a uh, boat class. Boat class is responsible for creating a boat instance. I don't know why our Agrum doesn't resolve this object. Um, I made a stupid mistake. We have to, yeah, we have to right here, import statement, import keyword. So we have to import from our Agrum library our boat class. Boat class is boat class is basically the class that will responsible that will be responsible for creating our boat instance. So this is like um, a model entity that represents the boat instance. There's all of it, so you don't have to worry about it too much. We just that's already implemented by our Agrum library, so it abstracts away all the underlying intricacies and complexities. So yeah. That's pretty much it. After this, we have to import a dispatcher class. Dispatcher class is responsible for our dispatcher, as I've already mentioned, and rotor. No, I'm not going to use rotor here. Uh, I'm going to use a types module. Types module, I've already told you about types module. Types module, this is like a TypeScript. This is like a strict typing when you tell your execution, when you tell your Python program which types of objects it should expect from you. It should expect from a specific function. For example, a specific function should return a string. In this case, we're going to specify that this type of return object would be a string. If this function will accept a uh, dispatcher object, we just specify here from types module, we import the dispatcher and we specify that this function should, should accept a dispatcher object. If we have to pass through message object, we have to I just specified that we need to pass through his message object. I'm going to show you this in this tutorial, so don't fret about it right now. All right, so first of all, let's create a dispatcher object. In this dispatcher object, we don't have to pass through any instances. It's just dispatcher object itself. So we just invoke this class, returns a dispatcher object, and that's pretty much it. After this, I'm going to define a new constant. This constant will retain the token API. Authorization token API is being used for connecting to our Telegram API and uh, get and obtain all the requests, all the updates, objects from our uh, Telegram boat. Once the user interacts with our Telegram boat and sends a message, our Telegram API generates a specific response, specific updates, and this updates object will be sent to our Agrum library, our Agrum library. And here, where our dispatcher object comes into play, because our dispatcher object processes all the requests from our Telegram API, all the updates from our Telegram API. So this is the responsibility of our dispatcher object. So our dispatcher object, this is like a main rotor, a main. Uh, this is like a brain of our program that processes all the requests and all the updates for Telegram API. So in this case, I have to import this token API. Let's import this token API from our. I'm doing the same as my previous episode because I think the best way to remember something repeated on numerous occasions when you repeat it every day on a permanent basis, when you rewrite your code many times, you would typically remember these things much better than if you don't 
but if you just copy this, this is basically why you need to write your code by yourself or rewrite your code by yourself each time you write your new program. If you if you already ex experienced developer, you don't have to worry about it. You, you can just copy and paste the code. So yeah, but if you are not experienced, if you are not experienced in Python, you typically should uh, write your code by yourself because it's extremely important uh, in the beginning of your programming journey. So, all right, let's specify here uh, token API. I think I don't have to declare a new variable because I directly imported it from our token API, but uh, actually I have a code snippet from Agrum documentation. That's why I decided to declare a token variable at first, but we don't have to use token token variable here because we already imported it from our token API. So the next thing we have to do here is just exactly as in our previous episode, tutorial episode, we have to uh, we have to invoke our dispatcher object. We just have to place here dispatcher object. And after this, we just have to invoke here a message method. Message method typically just registers some kind of handler. This is just like descriptor. If you don't know about descriptor, you need to read about it more. Descriptor is like a wrapper function that will uh, dynamically connect and dynamically add a new additional extra behavior to your function though. To, to your function during the execution. So in this case, we are making our, we are basically making our asynchronous function. This is going to be our handler, like common start, for example, like common start message, uh, just a moment, please. We just basically make this common start function as our handler. And we do it by means of this dispatcher and by means of this invocation of this message method. And here in our message method, we have to pass through our common start. And you might ask me where from I should import this common start. And uh, you just need to import this common start from agrofilters built-in module. They've already implemented this wonderful function common start. Actually, this not a function. This is a class that provides you all the necessary stuff that's being related to a message process and the common start process. Okay, don't worry about it now. Okay, so after this, we just return here, and not just return, I mean, we just response to our user. To respond to our user, we have to take the message object. Message object, this is exactly what we get from our Telegram API once our user message us, once our user texts our us message. We have a message object, so we need to invoke an answer method and here we need to specify some text for example in this case i'm going to specify here hello world and uh, that's pretty much it only thing i have to do here is specify none because our function returns nothing this is just a matter of convention because we just tell our program that our or we tell our interpreter that our function will not return anything and in this case our function will not return anything that's true because we just await a new message, but we don't return return anything specific, anything particular. But we can generate doc string here, for example, and tell that our function process the common start. This is a good practice. This uh, this is called defensive programming when you exactly specify uh, the documentation when you document your code, when you type your code, when you uh, better be safe than sorry, when you make your code robust, clean, reusable, and defensive when your code is less prone to failures and less prone to errors. This is this is all about a concept that's called uh, that's called defensive programming. Yes, as I've already mentioned. So process the command, uh, process the command, and I'm going to call this command start. And you know, one wonderful feature you get from this typing, from this typing concept is that when you type your command start, you can see here, you can see here that your Visual Studio code and or if you are using a PyCharm, it will drop you a hint like process the common start. This is a documentation of our function, the message class from our type. So this is pretty useful because now we can just start typing message, put here a dot, and we see all the methods that's being related to our message object. So we, we basically have a very convenient approach that lets us to the corresponding method we need to implement here, we need to use here. For example, if I need to answer a photo, I just can choose here, answer photo, and I don't need to look up into documentation each time I need to remember a specific method. But you don't have to forget that we need to use here a synchronous style, asynchronous programming, because our library is implemented utilizing a synchronous paradigm. Basically, we need to specify here 
uh, main function. Main function. This is an entry point to our program. Uh, I will just write here, just like something, entry point. Entry point. That means will launch your Agron boat. This will launch your dispatcher object. This will start polling. This is when you poll your Telegram API and ask Telegram API if some kind of new updates exist. If new updates from Telegram API exist, they will send you update object over at HTTP protocol. I've already discussed about it in a previous episode. You can watch it. And uh, in this case, I'm going to create here an instance of our boat object here. I need to specify a token, token API. This is going to be a token API, and moreover, I need to use here, um, I think I'm not going to use anything else, I'm just a call dispatcher start polling method, start polling method will start the polling, uh, and uh, I think that's all of it. One more thing I forgot to mention, we need to pass through here a bot object, yes. So after this, I need to specify here idiomatic expression if name equals main. A security measure when your code is being executed directly inside your terminal, directly inside your command line interface, that you need to open your index API from your terminal. When you directly put your index.py, for example, uh, index.py like this, this part of your program will be executed. If you don't specify this thing and you import this module to another, for example, module to another Python file, this part of your program will not be executed. So you can read about it more if you want in Python documentation. I think that's not a main subject of our videos, so I don't want to digress a lot from our area. In this case, I guess we have to import just a sincere library. A sincere library, this is about uh, a synchronous code. This is a perfect module, very reliable, very robust module that implements event loop and implements, basically it implements the asynchronous paradigm in your Python program, so you don't have to worry about the underlying complexities, it's already abstracts away. So all we have to do here is just run the method, oops, I'm sorry, run the method, the scout run, run the method, the scout run. This method is synchronous, so you don't have to put here a wait, this is not necessary. Uh, in this case, we just need to pass through our main function, main function coroutine, we have to invoke this function because this is basically a coroutine object. I think in this specific tutorial, in this specific video, I would like to consider mm, Markdown how to properly format your text, how to properly format your response. So in Abram we have wonderful, wonderful module that's called Utils. In this module, you can import something like can I bold or not? Yes, no, I don't know. Let's give this a shot and. Let's embed this markdown right over here in our text message. I'm planning to create here something like reply text. This is going to be a reply text. Uh, you can specify here a string. A string will let you embed in new substrings or new variables or dynamic variables directly inside your string. So this is like, uh, if my memory doesn't let me down, this called uh, interpolation. Let's do the following. For example, we have the following string. We have hello, and here we specify ichpod method, and uh, let's pass through the message object. We have to decorate, we have to make bold, and we have to make bold, for example, message. Here we have a user from user, and here we should have something like first name, yes. And in this case, we just pass through, uh, explicitly pass through reply text, and uh, I guess nothing else. So this is going to be our reply text. We pass through this reply text in our in our reply, and this is going to be a string that embeds both text and itself. Let's just leave it as it is and uh, start our program. It can import ihbot because it doesn't have any bot. Well, in this case, I'm going to open our documentation. In this our documentation, we can search ihbot and something like this, and they don't have. I made a mistake because we have to import our ichbot from our markdown. So if we have to import it from our markdown, let's just specify here markdown and uh, let's do it again. Let's rerun our module and uh, we can import token API from our token API. Uh, we can import from our token API, token API because we specify the wrong name of our module. Let's try it again and we don't see any mistakes. 
and we see our new folder new folder has been created by cache by cache uh, typically stores the like, cache that's being used by your python interpreter so you don't have to bother about it let's just open our boat and push the start command we see that our program works so we don't see it works properly why doesn't work properly because it embeds here typically it just embeds here html tags but our program doesn't work in this case we have to we have to specify in our boat the second argument is called parse mode here i'm just uh specify something like i guess html and uh, let's rerun our program let's open our telegram try it again and here we can see our message is bold so everything works fine so in this video we've been talking about how to properly format your text and how to implement your program from scratch in the next video based on this existing code and i'll be talking about how to properly utilize your dispatcher to register handlers and to properly organize your project structure more efficiently to split your program into several modules in this module in the first module we are going to consider handlers in the another module we are will be building our entry point to our program in the next module we'll be uh we'll be specifying some kind of variables or anything like this i don't know we just split our program into individual individual components extremely useful principle thank you for watching this video thank you for conferring your time with me i hope you found this video tutorial useful see you in the next episode